Hey everyone, have you ever wanted to use Spark within your .NET applications for big data processing? Well, you may be surprised to know that you actually can do that. And in this video, I'll show how you can get started with the Spark.NET crash course. So Microsoft actually has this really good tutorial on how to get started with Spark.NET. And it goes through all like the prerequisites and everything that you would need to get, get it up and running. So I kind of go through this for prerequisites and let you know any gotchas that I kind of came across that you may run into. And then we'll go into Visual Studio to code a small Spark application. So the first thing you need to do is install .NET. And I'm going to assume all of y'all already have .NET installed. But if not, it gives you links where you can download all that. And because Spark is running Java, you do have to install a Java Standard Edition development kit, uh, version 8.1. Now, it does say 8U211 here, but if you go to this link, it says, at the time of this recording in a way, it says 8U251. So then go ahead and you would just download this version. It doesn't really have to match the version they have here. As long as it's version 8.1, then you're good to go. One thing to note here, other than the fact that you have to create an account to download this, uh, is that it says to run the installer using the default settings. I would recommend you change the path where this does get installed. Uh, by default, it does into, at least on Windows anyway, it does on program files, which it does have the space in it. And I don't think running Spark likes, to ha likes that it has that space in it. So I would uh, change it to where to a location that doesn't have a space, just to be safe. And it says install 7-zip. I recommend 7-zip anyway, just because it can handle everything. Every every compression file that you can give it, it can handle it. So I usually get that anyway. And it's a good thing to have. But it recommends that because it's going to have a TGZ file. I think 7-zip is probably one of the only programs that can handle that. So go next. We install Apache Spark. This is where you need a 7-zip because first it has that TGZ file and then you extract that and that gives you a tar file. You need to extract that once again into the C bin, the Spark location here. And then it says to set some environment variables. This is one thing that you want to make sure you do correctly because I did do this a couple times and sometimes it would miss some of these backslashes. So I had to do this a couple times. One thing, if you want to be sure in Windows, is that you can go to System Properties and Environment Variables, and you can check these here. And feel free to update them here too, so you can edit and update them if you want to do that, or just create them here instead of using the command line. And to make sure everything's running correctly, it says you can run the Spark Submit version command. So I bring this over. So Spark submit version so you should get this when you run it so that lets you know that you have spark installed correctly just note that i do have this c bin location in my path that's why i was able to uh, run that so especially if you plan on doing this a lot i would definitely add this folder to your path so you can run it pretty much wherever another thing you can do is that you can run a spark shell command and go, it runs this pretty much like a REPL that you can use Spark with. And it uses Scala, but it gives you like a Spark context and all that. So you can play around with some basic Spark commands here if you if you want to kind of get used to using Spark in the first place. All right, so next, let's go up. Next, we download uh, .NET for Apache Spark. We do the extraction with 7-zip again here into C bin we download when utils and then we set this another environment variable for the .NET worker directory after that hopefully you didn't run into any issues doing that now let's go to Visual Studio and I already have my data already here this is a bank data that you can use to determine if a certain person has defaulted on their loan or not we do need to install a NuGet package here, and it's going to be Microsoft.Spark. So we install that using version 0.11 here. We should have all that. And the first thing we need to do is create our session, our Spark session. We can do that using Spark 
session dot builder call that method call app name and pass in whatever name that you want to call this uh, spark application so I do bank analysis and then call get or create so it's going to get or create the new spark session once this runs and now I can create a data frame by using the session dot read and I read a CSV file that's going to be that bank that CSV file that we have there but I need to give it some options here and let me put these down into several two different new lines here I'm going to give it a few options if I have like one or two options I can just call the one option command that just takes in a key and a value as uh, parameters there but I have a couple of options I want to do so I'm going to do the options and that's going to be a new a new dictionary and let's bring I'll kind of tidy this up I'll bring this in as a using statement so it'll be a dictionary a string and string and I'll pass these in directly so first it's going to be the header is true so it has a header on there the second is I want to infer the schema and that's going to say do your best to tell what the schema is based on the data in the columns the next I'm going to tell the delimiter is actually a semicolon I'm going to read in this file with some options and we get a data frame here and the first thing I'm going to do is do a show on that data frame and that's going to basically print out the first 20 rows or so and so real quick I'm going to build this project uh, how to actually run this using spark so we have to run us that spark submit command that we did earlier we have to run that with some some options with it so first of all I need to go to this to the location where this uh, application was built because if you look here it builds a couple of things with it that we need for, in order for it to run so I'm just going to copy in this command and show what's going on here so the first thing is we call this spark submit and we tell it, we give it a class the dotnet runner and we say we want it to run locally and we give it the spark jar which is what gets generated here then we tell it to run the dotnet command with our application with our dll that we built that's where we build this first before we, we have to run it but if we run this we say it can't find this the spark that jar here that says this in the bin directory it can't find that so one thing you can do is you can either go in another folder another level down and run it or in this command you can just put it up here to go down another folder but if we run that again there we go so it ran and you notice it, it gives this error here at the end uh, well, exception while deleting spark temp directory this is a known issue but if we go up, up here it did all our work for us so it doesn't impact our application it's only at the end when it tries to do some cleaning up so all of our code does get run and executed before this exception happens and we do see that it loaded our data correctly and it parsed it out all right and we got the first 20 rows here so now we can go back we can do some more stuff here first we can tell the print the schema so we can verify that the first schema option worked correctly the next I want to do a describe on it and then show that which gives us a little bit of extra information on our data frame here and the next I want to write out a couple of things and yes you can use console.writeline it'll still print out to that to this console here so first I want to do a count of the number of rows I do df.count on it and that's a method next I'm going to get the number of columns so I can do df.columns which is a, a method as well and get the count from there and the columns are a read-only list so this is just a property count and not a method count 
and then I'm going to do a new line to help, kind of help it help make it easier to read. There we go. So let's build this, and then clear the screen, and then execute this again and see what we get. All right. So that ran. And let's go all the way up here. You notice we get we get a lot of information messages here. So it's kind of cluttering up our output. So here's that first uh, show with the data. Here's that and first schema. And we can see age, integer, job string, marital, education string. So it looks like it inferred the schema correctly there. And if we can find where, all right, so here is that describe here. So it does account, mean, standard deviation, min, and max. It's a little hard to read. Let's see if we can make this a little better. Yeah, this, it's a little bit better, but you can get account, uh, the average, min, and max items of the, the data set here from the describe. And then somewhere down here is, there it is. There's the count, the number of rows, and then get the number of columns. So let's clear that. And first, I mentioned that there was just a lot of logging going on. Let's do something to kind of minimize that. And to do that, we can call a session that spark context and then set log level and just say error. So it only prints out if there's an error in our application there. So now let's do a couple of spark commands here. So the first thing we can do is that we can select different columns here. We can select a single column. I'll select age here. I'll do age that show to show that it actually did that one column. But we can also do multiple columns. Data frame that select. And if you notice here, it has a params, a string of an array. So we can give it as many string columns that we want. So we do age and separate it by commas. Let's see balance and then job. And say multiple columns that show. We can get the number of null values by doing a count on our data frame and subtract that by the NA method. And we can drop all of those items that have found and get a count from that. So any null values that it finds, it's going to drop it in the get the count of the number of null values that it dropped and subtract that from the number total number of count that it gets. And we can write that out to the console here. See so null value counts. It's just null values. And let's do another environment that new line. Another thing you can do in Spark here is that you can do some filtering using the filter method. And here you can pass in a string of how you want to filter. So let's say I wanted to take the balance and I want all the balance items that are less than zero. And let's do the show on that. But I can also do another filter on the same method, but I can use, I can get the column directly using DF with the brackets and pass in the column name like it's a dictionary. Now I want all the balance greater than zero. And we'll show that out as well. Another thing you can do is you can get groups using the data frame that group by method. So on the group by job, and then get the count of those groups. And then the group job that show, and print that out. Along with grouping, I can also sort using data frame that sort. So sort by balance and do a show by with it or show. That's just a couple of things that you can kind of do with it. Next, let's do a little bit of transforming of the data. So first, I want to drop some columns here using the data frame that drop method. And this is similar to the select method where we can pass in 
however many not, uh, column names that I want to. So I can do the same here and let me just paste this in. So the contact day, month, duration, and all, all the rest of these columns, I want to drop those. And let's do a show on that to kind of help so we can confirm that those items were dropped. And next I can actually rename some columns within our data frame. So I'm using that drop data frame. So I'm taking the result from this drop, which is another data frame, and I'm going to use that to do some more processing on it. And to rename, I'm going to call the with column renamed. And here I want to give it the column that I want to rename here. So let's say I want to rename the default column. And then I pass in the new name I want to, which is, would be has defaulted. I can chain these together here. So I can call this with column renamed again and say I want to take the loan column and rename it to has loan. And I'll do a show on that to verify that that worked. And then last, we can change some values here. So I'll take that renamed data frame and I'll say with column and let's take that has defaulted column and I say, well, first of all, let's let's take a look at this. So the default is uh, as a no, yes or no column. And let's say we want to make that into a zero or one instead. And what we can do is what this has defaulted. So it's going to take the renamed column here and I can call the functions dot win method. The functions dot column method. And I want to take that has defaulted column and I'll say where it's equal to y I'm going to input a 1 and then otherwise do a 0 so if has defaulted equals to y set it as 1 otherwise set it as 0 and then let's do a show on that to kind of verify that that works now let's build this and let's run this and make sure everything ran correctly. And before the program starts, we do get some information logged here. All right, so we get this end exception, that's fine. We'll go all the way back to the top. So there's that original, and actually let me move this over. There we go, so we kind of compare what we get here. So there's the initial show there's the infer schema the describe the counts there we go so we're here so here's the age it selected just the age and printed that out and we selected age balance and job so there's that there's no null values within our data set so that's nice and next we filtered on the balance less than zero so look at the balance we have all negative numbers here. Did another filter of balance greater than zero. And you see all we have are positive balances in this next data frame. Next we did a group by by job and then it got us counts. So we've got the jobs here and then the count of all the items with it. Next we did sort by the balance and it sorts ascending so it starts at the bottom and goes up. Alright, so we did a drop of all the columns. So we get a much nicer data set here. We renamed the default to has defaulted. And we, we actually, <laughs> I forgot we dropped loan. So this loan rename didn't happen. And uh, surprisingly, it didn't error out at us though, but it, it, it didn't. The next I uh, said that has default. So up here we have yes or no. Uh, just all no's here, but we told it to change the values here. So now our has defaulted is uh, all zeros. All right, and uh, hopefully that gave you a nice crash course into Spark.net, uh, mainly on how you can get it to run and some of the cool things that Spark gives you within .NET. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see y'all next time. Thanks.